these unexplained places are driving the internet crazy but look let's get into this video i know i know it's been a lot of things going on y'all and it's a lot of things we have to talk about that's going on in this world but look uh make sure y'all smash that like button y'all already know how we do good vibes only just know we're going through this thing called life together you never in it by yourself but let's get it <laughs> When it comes to ancient times, there is a theory that maybe the ancient world was more connected than we first thought. What if ancient civilizations were somehow connected by underground tunnels and cities? That would maybe help explain why we have ancient similar structures found all over the world. Archaeologists and researchers to this day believe that the pyramids that can be found both in the Americas and in Egypt and many other places are just a coincidence. But what if they weren't? But they're not. For instance, in Egypt, the Giza Plateau has an enormous underground system that is a combination of man-made caverns and tunnels as well as subterranean rivers and passages. And to this day, no one knows the exact length of some of these tunnels in Egypt. For example, after draining insane amounts of water from a shaft in Egypt, Kathleen Martinez and her team found something quite astonishing. At the end of the tunnel, there is a door. <laughs> the tunnel went on and on, and the truth is, they were unable to explore further because there was still a lot of water in it, even after removing water for three consecutive days. In Guatemala, 800 kilometers worth of tunnels have been mapped underneath the Mayan pyramid complex at Tikal. And during Kuyu in Cappadocia in Turkey is probably the largest underground city that has been discovered to date. Not to mention ancient legends and myths of creatures that used to roam these places that came from inside these tunnels. And and Cusco and in the and at the Coricancha, the gold temple, there was always these stories of this chincana, this this underground world, these tunnels. Mainly they've been sealed up. But it's, it's very, you know, well-known legends here in Cusco of these secret underground tunnel system. So people would go into the tunnel system and sometimes they would completely vanish. Now, if we take a look into missing people and caves, it's... Hey, you know, that's crazy, though. Like, people will hear them stories and they and some people I heard just get encouraged. Like, yeah, how about I go there, too, and see if I can get missed? That's wild. But... That's why, I mean, I'm not going to tell y'all what to do because when I was young, me and my friends, man, when we were uh, our first base in Japan, man, we went exploring in some caves that we ain't had no business in, but we was deep in there and, and a lot of stuff could have happened. But yeah, explore the world at your own risk, man. Be safe out here. It's baffling. The thing is, if we take a map that shows us where people went missing in the United States of America and then a map of where caves are located in the United States of America, well... Both maps are correlated. How the heck is this possible? So the number of people who went missing near or in caves is just astonishing. There is one story of a YouTuber by the name of Kenny Veach who found what appeared to be an artificial cave in the middle of the desert. Artificial. A solo hiking enthusiast that went missing on November 10th, 2014 while trying to go back to what he coined an M-shaped cave Thanks. Like that's alarming to me though, y'all. Y'all feel me though? Artificial, as soon as artificial cave. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep my I'm gonna keep my ass walking. I'm gone. You know what I'm saying? Even if that was my only place of shelter, I'm gonna keep walking. G artificial. Something made that, and they still there. That he previously stumbled upon. Absolutely not. Nigga. The thing is, Kenny left a comment on a YouTube video discussing the M-shaped cave that he found. And he said that when he entered the cave, his whole body began to vibrate. In other words, to act weird. He said that he discovered this cave near Sheep Mountains, north of Las Vegas. He then went back to locate this cave, prepared and armed. He posted a video of his second attempt. Well, here I am, here in the mountains north of Las Vegas. And uh, I'm looking for a cave, and something about that cave just spooked me out of all the caves I've ever gone in. Hopefully I'll find it. It's shaped like a big M. It's a big cave that looks just like a gigantic M. And it's about as tall as I am and kind of narrow. 
In this second attempt to find the M cave, Kenny goes around the canyon and for some mysterious reason, Kenny can't seem to find the cave anywhere. So weird. I mean, I thought for sure I was just gonna be able to find it. Um, I remember it being fairly easy. And on November 10th, 2014, 6 a.m. in the morning, Kenny Veach went for his third try to find the cave. However, this time, Kenny never made it back, vanished. His wife even made a post on YouTube and the search party for Kenny Veach began. The thing is, Kenny Veach was supposedly an experienced hiker. He wasn't somebody who would just simply vanish in the middle of the desert. Now it's not just Kenny. In 1925, Percy Fawcett, along with his son and a friend, ventured into the Amazon forest in search of a lost city. In 1921, Perry wrote about this mysterious city that was supposedly located in the southern parts of the Amazon forest, the lost city of Z. And after five long months searching for this city, Perry and his crew simply vanished. There were at least 13 search parties for Perry and his crew, but none of them came back with any results. What's most intriguing about this all is that on March 2018, archaeologists discovered that parts of the Amazon rainforest that were long believed to be almost uninhabited were actually home to a thriving ancient civilization buried for centuries. Now taking into consideration that there are many rumors in the Amazon of lost cities and underground cities, what happened to Perry Fawcett and his team? Were they captured by natives or did they find something there? Don't. You shine the light down there. Yeah. What do you mean? It's f These are like steps. Huh? Oh my lord. But it doesn't stop there. The Hopi, for example, are a Native American tribe who primarily live in the Hopi Reservation in northeastern Arizona. According to Hopi Indians and their ancestors, they did not arrive over a land bridge from Asia, nor do they believe that they arrived by boat, but instead, their origin myths tell the story of how they climbed onto the surface from the underworld. The ancient Hopi also mentioned mysterious ant-like gods and flying shields that existed in the distant past. Now, if there are underground tunnel systems, cities that we have never heard about that were built in the ancient past, I'm not too sure. However, it makes us wonder, what are these strange sounds that people have been hearing all over countries and cities that some have coined skyquakes? I told you. I'm telling you, that's the same sound they use in those movies. Yeah. I put it code on video, I'm still recording since I ran out there. Okay. Now some I'd rather just have a real one, y'all. Fuck a sky quake, bro. I ain't with the sky quake. Sky quake is a little different. You know, that thing hit different when that sound come on. You feel me? Like, absolutely not. I'm not with it, y'all. I'm not with it. But, well, God dog. Some of these sounds haven't been confirmed. Let me know if y'all have heard that. Y'all Have y'all heard that? Like, I don't even want to hear it. Like, that's something that, you know, I don't want to go out of my way to just to, I don't want it to just start happening here. You feel me? Not like that. Sky quakes. So what are they? Fuck me Some up Some people believe bit. they could be coming from underground tunnel systems. The question is, what kind of underground tunnel system? These and many more accounts makes us question, is there anything down there? What is your opinion? Yo, so it's a reason why you can't go down there in like the Grand Canyon area, all those canyons and stuff. It's not because of uh, like your safety and stuff like that. Because look, people still climb like Mount Everest and whoop, whoop, whoop. And they still let people do whatever they're going to do around the world, man. All these dangerous things. They're not concerned about your health. They're concerned about what you will find out and what you can tell other people and what you can show actually exists on this planet. That's why you're stopped from maybe to do like shit that you're able, that you should be able to do. All of a sudden it's a government facility and <laughs> we know it's down there. Now it must be a really cool job to be an archeologist, I have to say. And one of the most intriguing finds ever is Lady Di in China. 
In 1971, one of the best preserved mummies ever discovered was found at the Mawangdui archaeological site and amazingly, the woman's skin and blood remained intact even 2000 years after her death. Mm. When the mummy was first discovered, medical examinations were soon performed on the body to try to understand its main features. It was so well preserved that it was possible to carry out several invasive research without damaging it. The thing is, scientists have never seen a mummy so well preserved before, and of course, Shinzui did not end up well preserved by chance. Scientists found that the interior of the tomb was covered with 20 layers of silk concealed within four elaborate coffins enclosed in one another. But the most mysterious of it all is the liquid that they found inside the tomb. It is said that when archaeologists first opened the tomb there was a transparent liquid that soon evaporated, an acidic liquid that to this day no one knows exactly what it is. Scientists soon came to the conclusion that it was this liquid that was helping preserve the mummy so well. So well that the mummy's hair, skin, blood, tissue were all intact. Archaeologists right. had never seen anything like this before and to this day no one knows how it was done. Now, I don't know about you. Nah, they know how it is. They just ain't gonna tell your ass. That's what <laughs> Let's keep going. But I've watched the Flintstones many times when I was younger. And there was one thing that I used to question myself while watching it. And that was if dinosaurs and humans actually coexisted. Now, the official scientific explanation is that they didn't. We are here after our long journey to the San Gabriel dinosaur footprints. Which is right there. Stepped right there. Amy, put your foot back in it again. Step right there. Right there. There's another one right here. The official response for such a question is that humans and non-avian dinosaurs never share this place, Earth, together. We did not ride them nor keep them as pets or harness them for domestic labor. The non-avian dinosaurs died out 66 million years ago. Now this is where things get really interesting. In 1562, Peter Bruegel painted what appeared to be two people riding two sauropods, a dinosaur species that was supposedly extinct millions of years ago. The thing is, the official explanation is that these are just camels. However, there are some people who look at the painting and disagree that these are just camels. That they I ain't gonna lie to you. I ain't gonna hold you. Those look like dinosaurs, people. Like, whoever saying it like camels look, man. Jump off a bridge head first. No, I'm just playing. But look, just, just think clearly, people. Like, you're not tripping. It's dinosaurs. Don't look like camels at all. Now, here's the catch. The first dinosaur species that was discovered was in 1819 by William Buckland. In other words, how did Peter Bruegel come to paint dinosaurs in mid 1500s unless of course he had seen it with his own eyes it makes us wonder doesn't it now the thing is if humans no. and dinosaurs really shared an existence at some point there should be footprints of humans and dinosaurs together and well there is a youtuber who claims he found one here's the video hello we are at the san gabriel river the south san gabriel river that is where there are many dinosaur footprints found right on the other side of those trees right there. So we're out looking for more footprints and we believe we've stumbled across a very large human footprint and here it is. Looks like a giant footprint. Put my foot right there and it looks like the pinky toe whatever the toe that is, and two more toes and a big toe. Now the more I look at this footprint, if this is a footprint, it actually does look like a giant human. If you move a little bit more that way, it looks like another big footprint, which has not really retained its original the thing is, this YouTuber was at the San Gabriel River on the other side of the river where dinosaur tracks can be found. And if you haven't ever seen them, here they are. And here's another one of his. They're probably like, I wish you would stop stepping in the foot so I could see them. <laughs> and then there's another right, one. Right, right, right. And then so, 
came right here. It looks like he pivoted. It's a different angle. A little bit. Right here. It's a big dude. Big strides. Look at this. Oh, I'm doing the splits. Now there are more dinosaur tracks that can be found all over the world and in my opinion it's very curious how they all look alike. There was another YouTuber by the name of WillyBob9999 that found dinosaur tracks, he doesn't say exactly where. And again, the dinosaur tracks are very similar to the ones that are found all over the world. But it's very interesting because just next to these dinosaur tracks, an area is being paved. And I guess these dinosaur tracks are going to end up paved also. Well anyways, what do you think about all this? Do you think there's any chance that humans and dinosaurs or dragons coexisted at some point in time in a very distant past or is it just our imagination? What we do know is that it's a lot of things that they hide. Nobody has the complete full story. Collectively together we can put these things together, but what it's looking like people out here in the world, everything what we do know is, everything that we learned in school ain't the truth. Now you see that that like, like in some states they're banning certain shit being taught and everything that's because everything we learned was cap y'all. Everything we learned was, was complete moolarchy. And we had to be the ones to learn that shit, but I already like, like most of us knew, that's why we didn't like a uh, you had certain kids that just wanted to take sale in school and stuff. That's cool. Find it, Danny. There are people that are wired to just do that, right? But a lot of us knew, like, bro, I'm never going to use this. I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for something different. This is not what I'm going to be doing. So I shouldn't be focusing on stuff that they're trying to make me instead of what I'm going to turn into and what I'm going to evolve into myself. I already had an idea. But, you know, that's what we have to deal with. It's information, like they said that we people do on uh, YouTube and stuff. But we just be having a good time, man. We discovering information for ourselves, and I think this is dope. In the comments down below, these are the hieroglyphs that our people are gonna be looking back on, like I be speaking about. But let's keep it going, though. Now, if there's one thing yeah. that we are probably very proud of in today's world is the technology that we have achieved. To be honest, we have achieved the unthinkable if you compare just a few decades ago. However, there is still a lot for us to learn. And for some mysterious reason, one of these things, one of these technologies that we still haven't mastered is ancient construction like the ones in Puma Punku and many others all over the world. To this day, archaeologists and stonemasons are very much baffled by the fact that some of these constructions can't be replicated even in today's world. The Puma Punku megalithic stones, for example, can be found in Tiwanaku in Bolivia. They are megalithic stones that seem to be scattered all over. It's like they were thrown there by someone or something. It just doesn't make sense. And the thing is, some of these stones weigh more than 100 tons and are more than 25 feet tall. Which makes it very interesting to think about how did they get there. Now some researchers believe that they were not carved in ancient techniques, that they may have been carved with advanced technology because of the precision that some of these rocks present. And to make it all more intriguing, some of these stones have magnetic properties. Of course. Of course. Everything yeah, does. the opposite direction. Which makes me think maybe there's something inside of them. Now the curious thing is that if we try to replicate the ancient techniques and redo these megalithic stones, it's not possible. So how was this done 2000 years ago or even more? In 1936, in Baghdad, a jar was found. Two years later, a German archaeologist noticed that there was something strange about this jar. It was made out of clay with a stopper made of asphalt. Sticking through the asphalt is an iron rod surrounded by a copper cylinder. Like a the bomb, curious nigga. thing is that if you put vinegar or an acidic liquid inside the jar, it becomes a battery. It can actually produce 2 volt of electricity. So some people coined it the Baghdad battery. And to this day, there is a large discussion if this was indeed the first electric battery or if it is just a coincidence. On this wall, we see what appears to be giant light bulbs, crooks tubes, 
right? In ancient times, still today, the snake is often considered to be a symbol of electricity, Kundalini energy, snake. This here is a dead pillar, but it actually looks like it's a Faraday. And what you can see is this is not talking about wireless electricity because it's plugged in to this condenser here. So they're saying this is symbolic, it's supposed to be lotuses. Why is it plugged in if it's symbolic? Yeah. Whatever here, Hakim says the texts here are saying a warning. They are issuing a warning that this ancient knowledge of power that can be abused. Have you ever stopped to wonder if there were other types of civilizations living amongst us? More advanced types of civilizations? This is actually a question that most people ask themselves at a certain point in life when they get to know about the ancient Egyptian pyramids, the Elora Caves, Bermuda Triangle and many other mysterious places. There are a number of magnetic anomalies found in such structures. Mysterious places that till today baffle experts. In this video, we are going to be talking about some of these unexplained places that defy absolutely everything that we know of. Let's start with the Elora Caves located at Aurangabad, Maharashtra. There is a mysterious temple called the Kailasa. It is a temple of Lord Shiva. And it can Hey, just alone though, like looking at these structures is, is, is just amazing. Like look at the lines, look at the symmetry, look at the mathematics that it takes to be able to put this together. Y'all know what I'm talking about them when I speak about the mathematics. Look at the angles. Just think about that, man. Mathematically, just think about this shit. Were they more advanced or not, y'all? Because we're still like, how do they do this? They're not as dumb as people. They want you to think that our ancestors are idiots, but they were in tuned with more than just technology. They were in tune with nature. It didn't, they didn't do this with chisels. They didn't do this with prehistoric items, nothing. They were advanced, people. It's lit. Let's keep going though. Good vibes, y'all. Construction and architecture of this ancient temple is one of the greatest archaeological mysteries of the 21st century. The Kailasa Temple is a monolithic carved structure. In other words, it wasn't built using structures or rocks. It was actually carved into the mountain. It is huge. For instance, this is the only temple in the entire world where the carvers actually started from the top of the rock and excavated downwards. Look at that. By looking at it, it's as if it was carved by some type of technology that we still don't have today. According to archaeologists, it is estimated that approximately 400,000 tons of rock were removed from the site in the making of this temple. This sheer amount of heavy rock was never found or seen by anyone in and around the site. The rock is known to be around 6,000 years old, but when exactly it was carved into a temple is still a mystery. It's the kind of structure that actually makes you wonder if there is anything else out there that we're not aware of. In a video gone viral from Mexico, you can see lights in the sky that at first appear to be from a storm or something like that. I can't see any source of light coming from the ground, so these are not party lights or something like that. Whatever it is, it's coming from above. And it left the two people who were taping this very much baffled. Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hey, but hey, he going to the crib. 
In like this video, it. for instance, a humanoid creature is captured on camera, one that I've never seen before. Check this out. Yeah. I'm not getting near that. I'm not getting near that. Get the hell out of here. Uh-uh. 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 You ain't tell me uh -uh. you ain't see that the whole run, time. Run! Run! In this next video, for instance, known as the Russian Bigfoot, a huge creature leaps towards a car. Like, I don't get it though. Like sometimes I question those clips right there because I know me, I had a camera, right? I had that thing out. As soon as something real started happening, survival instincts kick in, people. You ain't just gonna be holding that camera. We can be out, unless you got one on your head or whatever, you know, like a head mount. That's what they need to start carrying out there, man. Stop messing up the footage, man. If y'all going and looking for some shit for real, you know you gonna have to need. If you if you approach some real stuff, you might ha you might need your hands, people. <laughs> Whatever this creature might be, the two people inside the car seem pretty much frightened by it. <laughs> Oh yeah, back up. Он бежит. Леша, ты за окно! Кто за окно? Он идет. Леш! Он бежит. Все домой, нет? Да, домой! Now what Sheesh. if some of these structures, such as the Elora K? Hey nigga, out! I'm out, bruh! You feel me? Like I'm I'm gonna get my niggas. We coming back. We come back to get you, bro. You ain't just gonna scare me like that. I'm playing you <laughs> The Egyptian pyramids and many other places were actually built by the same civilization. I know, it may sound crazy, doesn't it? But some researchers in Peru may actually agree. Check this out. We can take some other things here. Because if you see this kind of main construction in the lower part... Dr. Theo Paredes is explaining that some of the constructions in this site are probably not made by the Incas in Peru. And he also notes that if you've been in Egypt, you will notice that some of the constructions are very similar how could this happen if they were thousands of miles away from each other? And supposedly there were no airplanes at the time. What? Oh, where you see this really fine masonry. If you have been in Egypt, one of the main things that is going to come to your head when you will see the work down there, is that it's the same technique, the same hand. The ones who has been done part of the sacred chamber in, in Egypt are the same guys who have been doing this. This is the same hand. Now talking about Egypt, in January 2020, there was a very strange object that was supposedly discovered in Egypt. For some unknown reason, it interfered with electrical devices. It did not reflect itself in the mirror. In inserting it in a cup of water, it boiled the water instantly. And in one of these mind-blowing videos, you can actually see the object glowing through the person's hand. Absolutely not, nigga. You wanna know what, I, bro? Like, that's what you don't do. Like, now that I think about, I think I've seen a similar device or something like this before. But if it's Nah, I ain't with it, man. That's 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 radiation, bro. Like, I don't know what type of radiation. If it ain't the type of radiation that I need, you feel me? The the, the radiation that come from the sun, it, that can be. I don't know. I don't know. I feel some type of way about this one. How y'all feel about this, man? Like, this is how you develop something and start falling apart. Not only that, Pick when the person held the object drip. against a mirror, 
holding it in his hand, you can actually see his skeleton. Okay, as I've if seen the that object before. is actually messing with properties around it. What the heck is going on here? Now you've probably heard of the magnetic hills or gravity hills around the world, hand right? up, brother. And you've also probably heard that most of them are part of some sort of visual illusion. And well, that is actually true in most of the cases. But in some rare cases, they are completely unexplained. For instance, in Machakos, Kenya, there is a very good example of what is a gravity hill. Also, in Lewisbury, Pennsylvania, there is a very interesting one where it's basically impossible to explain how this is a visual illusion. What is known as a gravity hill, they're all over the United States. This one, and it, the gravity hill is right here, I'm going to show you what happens. But anyway, you drive up here, you stop at the white line, put your car in neutral, and you will roll uphill here to the white line. Dan Bell Film It YouTube channel is going to show how it's done in Pennsylvania. He puts his car in neutral and well, he goes up. Fascinating. Yeah, that shit wow. <laughs> That's wow. If it's an illusion or not, let me know what you think. In Saqqara, Egypt, there is a Serapium located northwest of the Pyramid of Djoser. It was a burial place of Apis bulls. Inside this Serapium, there are a series of tombs. Each tomb weighs is more than a hundred tons, and the rocks in which the tombs were made of are not loco. In other words, they had to be made or brought from another place. Now the crazy thing about this is that there is a underground passageway to where these boxes are located. And it's basically impossible for 2,000 people or more to be carrying these boxes inside of these tunnels towards the chambers where they are found today. To work. So when we see the other ones also inside the chambers that's finished, Hmm? How would this be finished if you don't have space for the people to be working around? Basic and simple question. So let's just get this bull thing straight. The largest box found inside the Serapium is 7 feet tall. The lid itself weighs more than 50 tons and it was actually found open. The pathways are really straight. And there are dozens of these boxes inside. Each one of them weighs at least a hundred tons. The quality of the finished surface of the body of one of the stones is much superior to the writings found in it, which makes no sense at all. No one knows till this day how the boxes actually were lowered to the chambers where they are at. And it would take 200 people at least to move the lid open. Now take into consideration that this is a really small place. You can barely fit one person between the box and the wall. And in one of the guides believes that there is a secret passageway, a hidden door of some sort in one of these chambers. Yeah, and there used to be other devices I believe in this place which you can see that they were, there was the, there is a carving in the wall to house something else. I believe it could be a false door or what we know as the false door. Not to mention the fact that they would need light. Today that we have electrical systems, they didn't. They used fire. You see this, the tunnel itself is right. all carved in the bedrock. Right. So imagine if we turned off this light now. Hyde goes on to explain that if you turn off the lights, you can't see anything. So how did they do this? There are no markings of fire on the walls or on the ceiling. In the dark, how you gonna, what are you going to be using? A flame? There is no even markings of any of this in the dark. There, and there are no openings in the ceiling. The guide continues on to explain that the hallway isn't even wide enough for 2,000 men to carry this megalithic box. So how the heck did these box get in there? No, no. 
world man that you know we have yet to get a full understanding for or you know most of the information just been suppressed so that the masses don't understand what's really going on in the world but every day by day we're gonna keep doing dope videos you know what i'm saying to you know opens people's mind to thinking just a little bit differently because clearly what we've been doing for the past like what like 100 200 years has not been working people but look man we evolve as a people we evolve together good vibes you know saying we got to raise the vibrations from you know fixing personal parts about ourselves and like i told y'all in my last video i got things about myself too that i'm working on you know hopefully someday we can all come together as a people and you know what i'm saying shine so radiantly and one that one day we can we, we we can uh you know have a place where we don't have people living on the streets and asking for money and stuff hopefully someday you know that we get to a place where everybody can just man just be doing things that you really want to do in life and not forced to live a lie not forced to be working in a cubicle that you hate to be working in you know just to survive and just to feed your family actually get out here in the world and do things that you want to do to fulfill you and your soul but look that's enough for me i appreciate y'all locking in with me i see you on the next video and like i always say spread love because it's too much hate in this world i love you guys i see you on the next video and i'm out though loud